In today's tutorial, we are going to create a symmetric logo inside Adobe Illustrator. A symmetric is a common way to create a 3D object without involving perspective. It's not how we view the object, it's what the object really is. And in the perspective view, all of the lines of your 3D object would converge into the vanishing point. In the isometric view, all of the lines stay parallel and do not converge at all. And this is the main difference between perspective and isometric projections. But in fact, isometric is a very misapplied term. We tend to call many artworks that is not isometric, isometric. In true isometric projection, the angle between x, y, z uh, axes is 120 degrees strictly. For example, we tend to call medium logo, old medium logo that we created in the previous graphic designer tutorial, isometric. But angle in this logo is not a 120 degrees. So this is a pseudo isometric logo. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a true isometric logo. And there are three ways how to do that inside Adobe Illustrator. First is to use isometric grid. Second is to use uh, isometric action. And third is to use uh, 3D effects inside Adobe Illustrator. For example, 3D rotate effect inside Adobe Illustrator. But in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you a fourth method how to build isometric uh, logo using uh, hexagon and shape builder tool. So, so let's start with the new Adobe Illustrator document. Ctrl N, Command N to open the new dialog box. And I'm gonna size this document with 1920 by 1080. Click create. First of all, let's show the grid. Ctrl Quad. Command quote to show the grid, Ctrl Shift quote or Command Shift quote to snap to the grid. You can also find these options here. View, hide to the grid, snap to the grid. And now I want to show you my grid preferences. So go to the edit preferences, guides and grids. I have this 160 pixels in between most prominent lights of my grid and number of subdivision set it to 8. Uh, so I have this 8 tiny little cells in between each and the width and height of these cells is uh, 20 pixels. Click OK and let's start with the polygon tool. Grab your polygon tool, hit once on your artboard and set the radius of your polygon to 240 pixels and number of sides set it to 6 to create a hexagon. Click OK, click on the slash to get rid of the fill, grab your selection tool and holding shift key rotate it on 90 degrees to the right. Align this polygon to the center of your document. Make sure that you align into the artboard. At Notice we have this, uh, in the top right we have this transform panel. And I'm gonna increase the width of this polygon to 480 pixels. So it's equal the height. And we have, we achieve our perfect equally sided uh, hexagon with an angle of 120 pix uh, pixels. So it's to build a true isometric logo. So in order to do this, I can change this width on my uh, transform panel or simply I can use the aligning options and increase it onto the half of the cell and then on the one cell from each side. And voila, we have 480 height and width. Now we need to create a couple of copies. So Ctrl C, Ctrl F to make it duplicate. Then hold Alt and Shift or Option and Shift and scale this duplicate on three cell from each side. So on 20 pixels from each side. Ctrl C, Ctrl F again and scale it again on three cells from each side. So 60 pixels here and 60 pixels here. And as you can see, this is 480 pixels, this is 360 pixels, and this is 240 pixels. So we have three 
polygons. I'm gonna align all of my stroke first of all to one point and I'm gonna grab my line segment tool or click on the slash and holding shift key I'm gonna dissect all of this hexagon in the middle. Now I'm gonna align all of my design elements to the center of my document. Very nice. Now we need to create also a diagonal light that is uh, intersected with uh, these corners. I'm gonna benefit from the my snap to grid options. It's very easy to do this using your gra uh, snap to grid option and you need to also work with your Dirk selection tool. Really nice, now we need to control R, command R to select all of your elements, grab your shape builder tool or click shift M and now I first of all gonna define this small cube in the center. So left side, top and right side. Now we need to define the uh, size of my letter C. I'm gonna select all of these elements and last I'm gonna define the size of my large cube here in this composition. So first of all right side, then top side and left side. Delete un unnecessary lines. Really, really nice. So let's start our major part of this tutorial. We're gonna recolor our artwork. So I'm gonna sh I'm gonna assume that I have this light source in the top right of my ob from my object. I'm gonna mark it as a light source. So I have the lightest, brightest uh, sides here and there, and the darkest area here and here. So let's start recoloring our letter C. I'm gonna select all of these paths, swap fill and stroke, or click Shift X. And then we need to create a color palette. In order to do this, go to the swatches or go to the Windows swatches, navigate to this icon Adobe Cooler on the bottom of your swatches panel. Open it, navigate to tab Create, select your rule, color rule with this icon. From drop down menu, I'm gonna navigate to monochromatic. Then Travel on your color wheel and select the colors you want. I'm gonna select these colors and then click on this icon Add to Swatches. Really nice. We added to Swatches and ready to recolor first side. It's the lightest side. This is more saturated sides. Uh, this is the darkest side and this is the moderate darkness. So I'm pretty happy with this result. And we need to apply also a gradient to large uh, to the sides of our large cube. So let's start it with this side. Uh, apply a default gradient, get rid of the st uh, stroke, and apply a default gradient. I'm gonna select my uh, gradient tool or click G and align it from the top to the bottom really nice so our dark color is now on the bottom i'm gonna double click on this dark stop point and push this slider on the gray scale to around 50 percent gray really nice i also uh, want to create a bit of uh, gray color here so the darkest uh, the brightest side is really uh, here, the lightest side of this uh, side. So uh, I'm gonna push my white color first of all to the right, then select something in between my uh, these two colors, create a new stop color and push it to the left, to the max. So really nice transition, I'm pretty happy with this. 
and I'm going to select my top side and uh, first of all select this color it's a good starting point as you can see uh, I'm, we need to align it properly so click your G gradient tool grab it gradient tool and realign your uh, gradient from the right to the left so the darkest color is here the brightest is here I also want to delete my uh, gray and use only two stop color gradient here really nice so this uh, here is white and here is gray and last my left side I'm gonna select this color here then gra grab my uh, gradient tool and select this like so so the brightest color is here and the darkest is here but I also want to pull some gray here in the white uh, white color stop so double click on your color stop and push the slider to around 7% and then double click on this slider with 15% and push the slider to around 90% so it's the darkest side of our large polygon now select this left side sample the color from this large and then navigate to your recolor artwork go to the edit tab link between harmony color this icon and increase the brightness i'm gonna simply increase the brightness of this gradient to around on eight percent click ok now align properly from the right, or, sorry, from the right to the left. And last, I'm gonna select this on my top, align it properly with gradient tool. Again, go to the my recolor art for tool and increase the brightness. really really nice probably uh, select this three colors gradient align it properly really nice i want to uh, reverse my gradient and then double click on this gray navigate to gray scale i'm gonna reduce this gray to around two percent only two percent also i want to reduce this gray on my bottom from 15 percent to around nine nine percent i also want to expand a bit my white gradient really nice and uh, i also want to expand my gradient on this right side of my large gradient so this is how we can create and recolor our isometric logo inside adobe illustrator i hope you enjoyed if you do follow me on youtube and skillshare thank you for watching have a nice day